Women in the United States and in Western Europe are the freest and most liberated in human Income history. Income inequality is actually a good thing when it's the product of a free market economy. As for the charge of genocide, there was no genocide. The United States still maintains the most generous immigration policies in the world. When I hear young blacks talk about systemic racism, I don't know whether to laugh or cry. Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. I'm Blair or the Illuminati and today we're going to be talking about a topic that was requested to me a couple of times called Prager University or Prager U. Now Prager U, if you're not aware, is an American media company that creates videos on political, economic and philosophical topics from a conservative perspective. Now on the surface, that doesn't sound awful by any means. I mean, everyone's allowed to have their own viewpoint, obviously. If someone makes videos from a far left or right leaning perspective, that's fine, that's their right, and I'm not trying to knock that. However, for me, PragerU's issue isn't that they express their views, but that their videos are trying to rewrite history and contributing to the spread of misinformation. But before we get into that, we need to jump right into who Dennis Prager is and why he even founded this university with lots of quotes around the word university. So let's jump right in and do some actual learning about PragerU. Dennis Prager, a conservative radio talk show host, and Alan Estrin, the radio producer and screenwriter, founded PragerU in 2009. Now, one of my sources says 2011, but everyone else says 09, so that's what we're gonna go with. Anyway, Estrin was a former screenwriter for TV shows like The Practice and Touched by an Angel, and Prager hired him in 2001 for his radio program. Apparently, seven years later, during a promotional cruise, some of Prager's listeners said he should start his own university. Estrin told him the task was too daunting and they should take it virtual instead. Most of its $6 million budget to make videos is donated. This budget has increased significantly though and hit about $25 million in 2020, quadrupling in just over four years. As for how they operate, well, this is where things are gonna get a bit questionable. According to the New York Times, one recent morning, Mr. Prager was recording an Ultimate Issues Hour radio segment. He's written eight books. One is The Ten Commandments, Still the Best Moral Code, and since 1999 has hosted The Dennis Prager Show on the conservative Christian radio syndicate Salem. Mr. Prager is six foot four and imposing in a white button down shirt hunched over the microphone. He read some promos for his sponsor, Blinds.com. He took calls from listeners. He talked about the importance of children respecting parents, very important, and about how parents should not want their children to be the smartest in the class, but rather the most moral. He carefully threaded the needle for listeners as he made the argument for Mr. Trump as a values leader. There are two types of values, micro and macro, he argued. One seems to do with one's life, marital fidelity, religiosity, respect. And the other, he says, is more important and relates to the general effect of one's life. Donald Trump may not have terrific micro values, but I think he has terrific macro values, Mr. Prager said. When it comes to politicians, he said he marks a sharp divide between political life and personal life. And he argues that the president's personal behavior is irrelevant to his public message. This is a new line of argument for Mr. Prager, who spent much of his career focusing on those micro values. He is a longtime opponent of same-sex marriage, which he considers an effort to destroy the foundation of our Judeo-Christian civilization. An episode in his same-sex issues collection is titled, Love is Not Enough. Former fans of Mr. Prager's work say they are confused by his Trumpist turn. In terms of invasion of the body snatchers of watching people become more Trumpian, those moral icons becoming shills, he is way up there, said Charlie Sykes, the author of How the Right Lost Its Mind and a former radio host who used to occasionally substitute on Mr. Prager's show. Now you have to put Prager U in the category of other very successful meme machines and low rent conservative grifting. What's a bit odd and what strikes me as hypocritical here is that Prager insists being intelligent isn't what's most important. It's about being moral. Yet he seems unwilling to hold Trump to those same standards because as he said, Trump's personal values are irrelevant, apparently. But it's not just anti-LGBTQ messages and the idea that LGBTQ plus will destroy civilization that are a part of PragerU. The SPLC also warns that they have some extremely worrying things to say about African-Americans. A lot of this comes from not Prager himself, but their presenters. 
The presenters are the teachers in this university. Prager hires them to speak on conservative topics, people like Dave Rubin, Ben Shapiro, Will Witt, and others. And some of these presenters have or promote really extremist views. SPLC states, more troubling, Tripodi discovered there are connections some PragerU presenters have with white nationalist thinkers. In her report, Tripodi highlights Dave Rubin, host of an immensely popular nearly 18 million views PragerU video titled, Why I Left the Left. Rubin also hosts a YouTube talk show called The Rubin Report, where his guests have included alt-right figureheads such as Milo Yiannopoulos, conspiracy theorist Paul Joseph Watson of Infowars, and Molly No. Tripodi writes, the implications of creating a dense network of extremist thinkers allows for those who identify as mainline conservatives to gain easy access to white supremacist logic. Leveraging the thoughts of someone like Stefan Molyneux can have disastrous consequences considering that he regularly promotes alt-right scientific racism on his own YouTube shows. The fact that such rhetoric is ultimately connected to the presenter of one of PragerU's most widely circulated videos is alarming since Molyneux's ideas of natural law were used by the founders of the US to justify the subordination of African slaves, Native Americans, and white women. She tells Hate Watch, I would argue if PragerU doesn't want to be associated with those kinds of people, then they should really have to think about who's featured in their videos. I can't go through every single one of their presenters or we'd be here for a good year or two, but it doesn't take much Googling to see some of the worrying stuff that's come out of people like Dave Rubin's mouth. He's talked about the supposed link between race and IQ with Molly No on his show. He allows conspiracy theorists to talk on his show. And after the violence at the Capitol, he said, and I quote, I have always condemned the violence that has come out of Antifa and the left and Black Lives Matter. You can't use violence to get your political ideology. So without question, I condemn the violence, but that doesn't mean that the good people that went there to peacefully protest, they're not evil and bad, end quote. So, you know, he's holding people with his own values to a completely separate standard. He even laughs and takes this tone as if he's scolding a child when he says, you can't sit at Nancy Pelosi's desk and open her mail. And it is what it is in regards to people storming inside the buildings as if this were a joke when people committed federal fucking crimes. You just know that Ruben isn't sitting there after a liberal protest saying, hey, I know they're good people the way he did after what happened at the Capitol. PragerU is giving Ruben a platform as he's again, one of their presenters. On their website, Prager says, it's solely responsible for the content of PragerU videos and they are not responsible for, nor do they agree with or potentially endorse anything said or written by presenters in any other forum. And I get that, hey, they may have some healthy disagreement about a few things with their presenters from time to time and that's okay. But when someone has a pattern to promote and endorse white supremacist views that you claim you don't agree with, then why would you host them in the first place? As a side note, it actually amazes me that Ruben and PragerU work together because Ruben publicly came out as gay, even though PragerU has a history of publishing anti-LGBTQ content. Glad has a list handy on their website if you want to see it. I'll just read a few highlights from their article that illustrate a pattern of PragerU being incredibly transphobic. PragerU releases short videos on their site, app, and via YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Last week, the nonprofit organization was in the news for being home to an interview with TV host and actor Mario Lopez on The Candace Owens Show, in which Owens asked Lopez about parents supporting their transgender children, referring to it as a weird trend. In a video titled, Dangerous People Are Teaching Your Kids, contributor Jordan Peterson included the idea that all sex differences are socially constructed and fabricated gender pronouns among the supposedly evil ideas being taught in schools today. At another part, he mocks the book for pretty much telling you that trans is great. Contributor Abigail Schreier produced a video insisting that trans rights and specifically pronoun usage is totalitarian thinking and an attempt to control people's thoughts. On PragerU's The Candace Owens Show, the host and guest Michael Knowles equated being trans with being schizophrenic and insisted that trans rights are an attempt to reject reality. Remember, PragerU said they're not responsible for what they say on other platforms, but this came from PragerU themselves. They are a thousand percent responsible for the horrible transphobic shit they're spewing out there. For now, let's move on to their next presenter. Ben Shapiro has been called out countless times. He said he's opposed to the 1964 civil rights movement because the government forced private businesses into doing things. 
He's against Title II and VII of the Civil Rights Act when Title II and VII were simply anti-discriminatory laws for businesses to try and put everyone on more equal ground in the eyes of the law. Not saying that's happened and that discrimination is dead and far from it, honestly, but for Ben to argue that this was forcing people into doing things, I mean, yeah, I'm pretty okay with the government forcing businesses to not be fucking racist. And now it's time to take a break from today's video really quick, just to talk about today's sponsor, HelloFresh. HelloFresh cuts out stressful meal planning and grocery store trips so that you can just enjoy cooking and getting dinner out in 30 minutes or less. They offer over 25 recipes every week from a range of flavors, cuisines, ingredients, and dietary options as well, including low-cal, carb-smart, vegetarian, and pescatarian. And HelloFresh offers the flexibility you need with customizable orders every single week. You can easily change your delivery days or food preferences and even skip a week whenever you need to. HelloFresh's Easy Eats offerings has a ton of quick and easy meal solutions like 10 to 20 minute meals, low prep recipes, which God, thank God for that so badly I need it, and quick breakfasts and lunches, all perfect for your busy schedule. So if you wanna get started with America's number one meal kit today, make sure to go to hellofresh.com casket10 and use code casket10 for 10 free meals, including free shipping. There's plenty of videos online debunking Shapiro with the most basic of research, and yet he continues to willingly spread misinformation. He stated that because there's laws in place against redlining, banks refuse to give a loan to people because they live in low income areas or this kind of systemic racism just doesn't exist. People have pointed out that redlining does in fact still exist. Hell, even The Atlantic was saying it was alive and evolving just a few years ago. But I guess Shapiro is of the mindset of like, hey, if these discriminatory acts are illegal, then they must not be happening despite the evidence that they are. Okay. Now that we've got a feel for PragerU's presenters and their background, let's take a look at their content. We've already caught a glimpse of some of the transphobic snippets, but I went directly to their YouTube channel to see some of their more well-known content. One of them was a video of Will Witt at UC Berkeley asking students how many genders there are. Everyone he interviewed said that gender was a spectrum or there was an infinite amount. Only one person said two and he was describing sexual orientations. But for the most part, all those interviewed seem to understand that gender is different from sex, what we're assigned at birth. So call me crazy, but let's say I had a question. I went onto a college campus and literally everyone I interviewed disagreed with me. I'm not saying that would 100% change my mind right then and there, but wouldn't that make Will want to do, you know, just a bit more research? If dozens of people disagreed with me and were able to explain their point of view concisely and clearly, I think I might go back to the drawing board and question if perhaps I was the one who was mistaken. Another one of their videos called What I Can Teach You About Racism says that because their African-American presenter, Carol Swain is successful, this proves systemic racism doesn't exist. As long as you work hard and meet people willing to help you along the way, it doesn't matter if you grow up poor. And look, I'm not saying every single African-American person living in the US can't succeed because of systemic racism. Carol Swain has done incredibly well for herself despite an extremely difficult upbringing. And I'm not trying to deny or diminish that but her singular experience should be used as an inspiration, not a way to discredit countless other people's experiences of those who have been let down or oppressed by a system. At Vanderbilt University, where Miss Swain taught, students accused her of being discriminatory and she called these students sad and pathetic. Swain has also spoken out against Black Lives Matter, Muslims, and has even said this in her classrooms. I get what she's saying in the PragerU video when Carol says that your start in life doesn't determine your end. It's true that your attitude and how hard you work can hopefully become the most important factor in establishing who you become. I'm mostly with her on that, but not 100%, but that's, that's a thing for a different day. But she follows this up with, when people bring systemic racism up to me, I don't know whether to laugh or cry. Yes, she worked her way up from what she described as being dirt poor, and that is fantastic, and that's inspirational. But that doesn't mean systemic racism does not exist. It doesn't mean redlining doesn't exist. Both of these things can exist together. Your past does not have to determine your future, and African-Americans do face systemic obstacles. 
But that's just a couple videos we've gone through now. There's many, many others. I'm going to look at just a few more before moving on to the controversies PragerU has faced as a company. One of their transphobic videos is called The End of Women's Sports and has one female presenter say that she used to be the top female sprinter before two transgender women passed her in a race. She talks about how hard it was to get where she is today and how men can outrun women very easily. But here's the thing, the women she was competing against, they're women. I understand that biologically her competitors were born male, but she doesn't talk about any data in regards to how women's bodies change when they're taking hormones. Also, as a side note here, this specific PragerU video was sponsored by ADF, Alliance Defending Freedom, and I do have a script for them. We're gonna talk about it. Michael Ferris, you are on my motherfucking radar, my dude. Samantha Lux, a transgender YouTuber, actually has a fantastic video about trans athletes on her channel, which sources the Journal of Sporting Cultures and Identities. And if you wanna watch it, it's going to be available in my sources below. She sums up the studies she sources quite nicely and explains that after hormone therapy, transgender women's ability to compete is no different than their cisgender counterparts. The other argument is that transgender women will retain their athletic ability, including their larger build. Yet studies show that the disadvantages from hormone therapy, especially in runners, balances this out. Decreased aerobic capacity and decreased muscle mass are disadvantages introduced by hormone therapy, which changes people significantly. So for PragerU to use their data as proof that trans women shouldn't compete in sports is not only going against what actual scientific studies show, but to title it the end of women's sports is transphobic as hell. They also have a video called How to Steal an Election Mail-in Ballots that is just as bad as it sounds. There has been no evidence of voter fraud. Even judges that Trump himself appointed can agree on that. Hell, Georgia confirmed Biden after three recounts. We know this. And yet just before the 2020 election, PragerU set people up to believe that as long as a candidate they didn't agree with one, it would be due to voter fraud. Hell, they've even talked about Christopher Columbus and said that the first encounter between Europe and the Americas went well and that the said natives he encountered there were quote, mixed bags, some good, some cannibals that ate infants. PragerU criticizes what they call modern attacks on Columbus's reputation when I'm pretty sure calling someone out for genocide isn't exactly an attack on his reputation if it's factual. Columbus, by the way, instructed infants to be killed for dog food. So how can PragerU criticize the cannibals claim when Columbus was no better? Plus one source insists that there was no evidence these natives were cannibals in the first place. And Scientific American claims that much of what we know about the first peoples is an artful manipulation of history. PragerU outright states that Columbus didn't invent slavery and there was no genocide. Genocide by definition is an internationally recognized crime where acts are committed with intent to destroy in whole or in part a national, ethnic, racial, or religious group. There is a ton to debate about if Columbus committed genocide or if he committed atrocities that would eventually lead to the genocide of many Native Americans. One source says, Columbus was clearly no friend of native peoples, but a document discovered 10 years ago in Simanca, Spain, suggests he was an equal opportunity tyrant. Witnesses testified that his brief government of Hispaniola was marked by routine cruelty, not only to the native Tainos, but also Spaniards who defied or mocked him. A woman who reminded Columbus that he was the son of a weaver had her tongue cut out. Others were executed for minor crimes. Colonialism is never pretty. And in his treatment of native peoples, Columbus was following Spanish and Portuguese trading and slaving practices. We may charge him with genocide by negligence if there is such a thing, but it's harder to prove intent. Columbus wanted living and multiplying subjects to tax and govern. He was not interested in depopulating newly acquired territories. Was Columbus an active protector of native Americans? No. Did he wish to eliminate them? No. Did genocide directly result from his decrees and his family's commercial aims? Yes. His legacy is the beginning of genocide, whether that was his intent or not. And he should bear some responsibility for that. But for PragerU to state that the modern attack on his reputation is wrong and that celebrating Columbus is celebrating Westernization, I just don't agree. If Westernization means enslaving people, which unfortunately back then it did, then it's not something I really wanna celebrate. All right, I've gone on and on about these videos for long enough. Now I want to talk about their legal battles and conflicts with sites like YouTube and Facebook. 
First of all, PragerU had issues with copyright in 2013 when they used photos without consent. So that's why they're animated. But one of their biggest issues came in 2016 when PragerU insisted that YouTube was blocking their videos because they were under restricted mode. Look, I'm not gonna say YouTube is perfect and it most certainly is not, but I make my living here and I completely understand why some of my own videos get restricted. I mean, hell, anywhere between 10 to 25% of my videos every single month are demonetized and I just understand that's the way the cookie crumbles. They're just not for kids, whether it's the language, the subject matter, any of you watching for a while probably understand that. But my demographic stats show that and PragerU from what I've seen so far isn't really for kids either. Yet PragerU insists that these are animated, age appropriate and educational. Like we just watched some sort of like short animation about PragerU saying how someone ate babies. Like how can they argue that's age appropriate? Does it make it okay because the baby was animated? The videos that were on restricted mode are telling too as PragerU lists them. Here are some of the 21 restricted titles. Who not to vote for? Are the police racist? Why don't feminists fight for Muslim women? Did Bush lie about Iraq? Men and the power of the visual, not a complete thought here, but okay. Why do people become Islamic extremists? What ISIS wants? Are one in five women raped at college? There's also more on abortion and Islam, but PragerU insists that they're being censored by these restrictions. Just from these titles alone, I know this isn't something I'd want a child watching. And note, it's not as if they're saying that YouTube removed these videos, just restricted them. And personally, that's 100% fair. YouTube did respond to their concerns too and stated that they don't censor anyone, but take into consideration the video's intent and one surrounding metadata of the video explains. But PragerU, simply put, was pissed off. They actually filed a lawsuit against Google, YouTube's parent company in October, 2017, which is just fucking laughable. But anyway, let's take a look at it. One source said, Google slash YouTube have represented that their platforms and services are intended to effectuate the exercise free speech among the public, right? PragerU lawyers in the organization's complaint filed Monday. As applied to PragerU, Google slash YouTube use their restricted mode filtering not to project younger or sensitive viewers from inappropriate video content, but as a political gag mechanism to silence PragerU. PragerU says that at least 37 of its videos continue to be censored by restricted mode filtering, which limits views based on certain characteristics, including the age of the viewer. Those videos include educational content ranging from the legal creation of Israel and the history of the Korean War to the idea of diversity of thought on college campuses. YouTube's actions are absurd, arbitrary, capricious, and devoid of any rational basis, the lawsuit states. The lawsuit cites cases like Fashion Valley Mall versus National Labor Relations Board in which the California Supreme Court allowed protesters to pass out leaflets on mall property, even though they were advocating for boycotts of certain stores. Another precedent PragerU points to is Marsh v. Alabama, a US Supreme Court case in which a Jehovah's Witness was handing out religious pamphlets on the sidewalk in Chickasaw, a privately owned company town near Mobile. The high court ruled that Grace Marsh had a right to hand out pamphlets, even though the sidewalk she stood on was owned by a private corporation. The lawsuit includes a long list of PragerU videos that have been restricted or demonetized by YouTube, and it lists videos on similar topics that have not been restricted. For instance, PragerU claims its YouTube video, Are the Police Racist, was restricted or demonetized, but it points to a list of six other videos related to police behavior and racism that weren't restricted. Again, I'm not going to sit here and think YouTube gets it right every time. They have messed up a number of times on my own videos and sometimes you just gotta take it and that's the way it goes. There's plenty of educational videos out there that I don't think deserve demonetization. And like I said, I've obviously had issues with that myself. I get it, it sucks. I'm not saying PragerU should be kicked off the platform because freedom of speech is their right, but they can't whine about censorship while putting out content like this. Like it simply does not work. Like literally I'm with 98% certainty this video is getting demonetized for just mentioning the topics that they titled their videos. But I consciously know that going into this video, I think this is important information for people to learn and understand what PragerU is and what they're actually about. So I don't mind taking a demonetization 
monetization hit in the return that someone will potentially learn something from this video or any of my videos that I put out, like whether they're demonetized or not. If you're going to be an educational channel, a video essay channel, like what I am, you kind of have to be ready to do these things. Sometimes you gotta take the hits to put out information that is actually educational and understand that sometimes it's not appropriate for advertisers and that's the way it's gonna be. Plus when they've got a $25 million budget anyway, because of all their donors, my sympathy is pretty damn limited. Like I would like to even make like half of one of those millions. (laughs) Just, God, that'd be so nice. Anyway, I read through most of their complaints as well. And I think it's a bit odd how they insist YouTube is censoring them or discriminating when by all appearances, they have a very successful channel. It's not as if their voice isn't heard and they make it all so personal. On page three, they state that YouTube's restrictive mode filtering isn't to protect younger or sensitive viewers, but it's a political gag mechanism to silence PragerU. First of all, YouTube has been around far longer than PragerU. So I just don't even think that that's possible that they're intentionally silencing this channel in any way, like, and specifically this channel, right? Like, oh damn, don't you feel special right now? You're the only channel that gets demonetized, Like, shut up. But the second point of this is that Google and YouTube, they're not conforming to California's free speech laws. YouTube is a private entity. They aren't a branch of government or something. So they can still operate as a business and tell you to get the hell out if you're breaking guidelines. It's amazing to me how companies that are super conservative like PragerU or personalities that are super conservative are all for like deregulating and let the businesses decide, let the businesses decide. But then when the businesses make a decision, they're like, that's not fair. I'm gonna sue you because now I don't like the decision. Like you're the one who built this to be this way in the first place, honey. Like. What are you gonna do about it now? You made this monster. Again though, I'm not saying that YouTube has done a perfect job with their restrictive mode over the years, but I'm really glad in this case that it was dismissed because I would not want these videos being on kids' feeds. According to Reuters, in an article published on March 27, 2018, in a decision late Monday, a US district judge, Lucy Koh, said a nonprofit run by conservative radio talk show host, Dennis Prager, failed to show that YouTube infringed its free speech rights by placing age restrictions on its content. The plaintiff, Prager University, said YouTube's animus towards its political identity and viewpoint led it to curb access to videos, including through its restricted mode setting on such topics as abortion, gun rights, Islam, and terrorism, despite its stated promise to neutrality. But the judge said Google and YouTube, both units of Mountain View, California-based Alphabet Inc. Google did not qualify as state actors subject to the First Amendment by creating a public forum for speech. Defendants are private entities who created their own video sharing social media website and make decisions about whether and how to regulate content that has been uploaded on that website, Cove wrote. Plaintiff has not shown that defendants have engaged in one of the very few public functions that were traditionally exclusively reserved to the state, she added. The San Jose, California-based judge also dismissed a claim that YouTube engaged in false advertising by implying that Prager's videos were inappropriate. Needless to say, this didn't really go too far. They did appeal in 2020, but again, it was rejected. Courthouse News said that YouTube is not bound by the First Amendment and PragerU didn't have any evidence to prove that YouTube really did any wrongdoing here. Unfortunately though, we're still not done. As some of you know, YouTube will occasionally put little blurbs of information beneath videos about topics that are often controversial when they shouldn't be. Like for example, when I published my MLM video about Trump's MLMs, there was a blurb underneath that was like, hey, uh, by the way, Biden's president, That's also the case for my flat earth video. If you go to that, you'll see a little blurb underneath. That's all about how like the earth is not flat and misinformation about it. Like, thank you. It's a video like agreeing with you, but go off, I guess. A couple of years ago, they also started doing this with climate change and PragerU, of course, got pissed. And the reason why they seem to deny global warming is actually pretty sus if you ask me. According to one source, PragerU's largest initial donors were the fracking billionaire Wilkes Brothers, whose millions of dollars in donations helped to get the platform up and running. Characterized by some as the Koch brothers of the Christian right, Dan and Ferris Wilkes are not shy about their views on the reality of human caused climate change. Ferris, a pastor, told his parishioners in 2013, if God wants the polar caps to remain in place, then he will leave them there. 
Like the Koch brothers, the Wilkes have also used their wealth to influence policy. During the 2016 US presidential election, the Wilkes poured $15 million into a super PAC supporting Ted Cruz. In 2014, the brothers spent, according to Reuters, $800,000 in political contributions to Texas state legislators after the city of Denton banned fracking. Texas then passed a law that prevents a ban on fracking by municipalities. In an email to the Weather Channel Digital, Prager clarified that his organization no longer receives funding from the Wilkes. Further, he noted, it is inconceivable a donation would influence what we present. Perhaps then Prager's dissemination of climate misinformation comes from personal conviction. Indeed, he provided a great deal of clarity into his views on climate change with the Weather Channel Digital. I am convinced that rich Westerners who make up the environmentalist movement don't give a damn about Africans and other people around the world who desperately need electricity to merely begin to attempt to acquire the quality of life we have. All thanks to fossil fuels, he wrote. I am convinced the environmentalist is more a religion than truth seeking, remedy seeking movement. Influenced by donors or not, Prager has used the Wilkes' riches and millions in donations from other religious and conservative foundations in a strategic campaign to fight what he sees as the hostile anti-American, anti-God forces on the left. And my God, does my brain hurt. Why do people say the things they say? Even if Prager isn't influenced by donations, which I mean, kind of hard to believe considering how much money they make from donations. It doesn't make these viewpoints any more or less okay. Prager U's chief marketing officer told Buzzfeed News in an email that this is just another mistake with Americans trust in big tech, not to trust YouTube and they're politically biased. But the thing is, if you actually go to Prager U's video on climate change, any of their videos on climate change really, the link that YouTube provides leads to Wikipedia. Many of you know by now that I use Wikipedia as a general outline when I'm stumped on where to go with a video. Very rarely will I actually use information from the site directly, but I will use it as a guideline. I'll check out the sources they link and it's a great jumping off point for my own research and to figure out which rabbit holes to run down. So for YouTube to do the same thing essentially and say, hey, here's a basic overview of climate change and what it is, doesn't seem very political. They aren't quoting NBC or Fox News or OAN or whatever the fuck that one is or any specific news source that may have a bias one way or another. But if YouTube puts a Wikipedia article or a scientific study or a definition of something beneath the video, how exactly is that biased? I can say from experience that Wikipedia often does use sources from both left and right leaning sites too. They maintain a fairly neutral point of view as much as possible. So why would it be an issue for PragerU to have this on their videos? It's simple. Even the basic facts disagree with their views on climate change. They say that recent studies show a decline in the rising sea levels, that it's not accelerating as much as predicted, and they source two papers. One from Coastal Engineering in May, 2013, and another from Global and Planetary Change in January, 2014. Yet when I research for the statistics on sea levels, it shows a pretty steady increase. Coastal experts and the National Ocean Service say that the sea level is rising at an increasing rate, not that it's not as bad as we thought. Sure, one could argue that my sources are newer and their video is from 2016, but PragerU's most recent video about climate change and environmentalists doesn't seem to correct themselves either. Hell, even in the comments, people are fact checking them. Prager Yu said Teddy Roosevelt was a Republican and he advocated for national parks when Theodore Roosevelt became increasingly progressive and was a massive part of the progressive movement throughout history. As a side note, like, damn, if this is all it takes to become like a university, then I need to make like a Lumi U or something and just make my own university too. Cause I am pretty sure I'm teaching people more than anything Prager Yu has taught anybody, like literally anything. The video also compares the EU's carbon emissions in 2017 to the US's in 2019. And as one commenter said, the reason why they didn't show the 2019 numbers from the EU is because they actually decreased their carbon emissions more than the US. The video also references a study claiming that it says fracking is safe. Yet I looked up the word safe and went through the 19 mentions of it in the study. It wasn't beside or near the word fracking. It didn't say fracking is safe because studies definitely have not proven this. If anything, many studies have proven the opposite, that it will inevitably affect public health when it takes place. But hey, they aren't influenced by the billionaire frackers that donate to them. Of course not. Facebook has also removed their videos, but actually apologized when PragerU called them out for censorship. They said the videos were mistakenly removed because they don't break Facebook standards and well, I guess I could kind of understand it. 
As much as I disagree with their content, I think it's misinformation and they should absolutely be restricted. It's not technically breaking like a TOS as far as I understand either. I don't think removing these videos will do any good because it can be considered censorship, but I sure as hell hope that more of these footnotes appear at the bottom of their videos. There's even a conservative source called The American Conservative that wrote an article entitled, Right-Wing Celebrities Play Fast and Loose with History. In it, one historian and philosopher, Paul Gottfried, harshly criticized PragerU's video that insisted fascism was a leftist ideology. It read, perhaps one of the most ludicrous examples of the conservative movement's recent attempt at being sophisticated was an exchange of equally uninformed views by talk show host Dennis Prager and Dinesh D'Souza on the subject of the fascist worldview. The question was whether one could prove that fascism was a leftist ideology by examining the thought of Mussolini's court philosopher, Giovanni Gentile. Gentile defined the fascist idea in his political writings while serving as minister of education in fascist Italy. He was also not incidentally one of the greatest philosophers of the 20th century and in works like General Theory of the Spirit as Pure Act adapts the thought of Hegel to his own theory of evolving national identity. It would be hard to summarize Gentile's thoughts in a few pithy sentences and not surprisingly, the Canadian historian of philosophy, H.S. Harris devotes a book of many hundreds of pages trying to explain his complex philosophical speculation. According to our two stars in what have been laughably named Prager University, Gentile proves that fascism bears a deep kinship to today's left. After all, Democrat progressives in full agreement with Gentile love and push for a centralized state, which manifests itself in stuff like recent state expansion into the private sector. Among the questions that are left begging are these, do the modern left and Gentile agree on the purpose and functions of the state? Would Gentile and Mussolini who glorified Roman manliness have rallied to the present left in its support of feminism and gay marriage? Did Gentile back in the 1920s favor the kind of the stuff the administrative state is pushing right now? The answer to all these questions, which of course wouldn't be acceptable at Prager University is an emphatic no. Control of the national economy by the Italian fascist state down until its German puppet version was established as the Italian Social Republic in September, 1943 was about the equivalent of that of the New Deal America. Let me close these observations by noting the obvious. There are still many respectable historical works that are produced by scholars identified, however loosely with the American right. But there is also a plague of genuinely ridiculous writings on historical subjects coming from conservative media celebrities that surpass in their arrogant stupidity almost anything I've encountered in professional journals. As for people who yap about the ideology tainted work that originate in our universities, one might hope they'd be somewhat better than those they declaim against. That's not always the case. Gottfried goes into far more depth as to why this is not the case. There will be sources down below if you wanna check it out, obviously. I won't lie, I'm really glad to see a source like American Conservative calling this bullshit out. It at least gives me just the slightest crumb of hope. Other sources and experts have also said that PragerU's videos are full of half-truths, such as the idea that the US had the most generous immigration policy in the world. Even though PragerU doesn't technically lie when they say many Americans are foreign born, they suspiciously leave out the percentages of how many actually are. Their view about chain migration being a flood of people doesn't match any statistics the US Department of State has to offer. They're very manipulative in their wording to say the least. And according to the ADL or Anti-Defamation League, they're anti-immigrant and anti-Muslim too. My source reads, Europe is committing suicide, said British author Douglas Murray in a video published by far-right educational nonprofit Prager University. The cause, the mass movement of peoples into Europe from the Middle East, North Africa, and East Asia, who allegedly made Europe lose faith in its beliefs and traditions. Murray goes on to explain that temporary workers, such as a dark skinned man illustrated in the video, enjoyed hefty welfare benefits from their new European homes. He laments multiculturalism in Europe and offers a seemingly fake statistic that the most popular boy's name in the United Kingdom was Mohammed. In 2017, Mohammed was 10th on the list of most popular baby boy's names, down from eighth in 2016, according to the UK Office of National Statistics. Mark Pitcavage, senior researcher fellow at the Anti-Defamation League Center on Extremism, doesn't consider the video fascist or white nationalist, but told Sludge, the video is filled with anti-immigrant and anti-Muslim rhetoric. There is certainly prejudice inherent in the video. White supremacists are most certainly almost all anti-immigration and anti-Muslim, so they would certainly agree with a lot of the things that Murray says. 
Europe is far more densely populated, multicultural, and enmeshed in the real social and economic consequences of a refugee crisis than most Americans can imagine, Alexandra Devitt, communications director at the Anne Frank Center USA told Sludge. We must acknowledge that immigrants contribute far more to the economy, culture, character, and fabric of society than they take. Above all, we must respect one another as human beings. Any values from any group that inspires hatred are divisive, extreme, and a threat to humanity. In one passage, Murray laments that London is no longer majority white. VDARE, a group the Southern Poverty Law Center considers anti-immigrant and white nationalist has promoted the book. While Murray's video doesn't explicitly engage in the white genocide theory, Murray clearly energizes white nationalists with his writing and rhetoric. Murray's book is just one notch on his long anti-Muslim record. For example, he defended anti-Muslim British activist Tommy Robinson in the National Review in May. He has appeared in a movie produced by Pamela Geller, a noted anti-Muslim activist. Well, I'm glad to hear that many people are calling them out as being hateful because I mean, they clearly seem to be. However, worryingly, Vanity Fair said that in late 2018, PragerU is one of the most effective conversion tools for young conservatives. This isn't upsetting because people lean conservative, believe whatever you want, but PragerU isn't telling the truth. They're cherry picking sources and data and they're biased as hell. They've proven to be transphobic. They ignore very real racism when it happens around them or comes from them. And they're up right there lying about climate change too. So if this is one of the most effective conversion tools, well, I'd hate to see what some of the lesser effective ones are. And I know that even with what I covered today, this is only just the tip of the surface of all the bullshit that PragerU has to offer. But this is where we are going to end today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you got at least a semi like conclusive overview of what PragerU is about, the kind of people they host and just the general griminess that this nonprofit has. If you enjoyed today's video, make sure to hit that like button. If you're new to the channel, make sure to subscribe. And if you want more content from me, including all the sources I use to create today's video, make sure to click the description box links. I will have my sources linked, my link tree, which has all of my social media, second channels, projects, all the good stuff down below. So again, thank you guys so much for making it to another video. Love you and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.